Welcome to my world, where you will experience an atmosphere of love, relevant subjects, and motivation. So let's talk about things that matter. What matters to you matters to me. Greetings, my precious friends. Welcome back. You are watching the Brother Henry and You Show. I really hope you've been enjoying this series I've been doing on victim mentality. And I believe I've been sharing some very powerful information and insight. And I hope that it's very helpful. And I know it is. So thank you for watching. Today we're going to go into part three. And I want to talk about when victim mentality becomes one's identity. And I believe that this is going to be a very uh, good subject. We have been talking about this thing called uh, victim mentality. And today I want to talk about when victim mentality becomes your identity. What is that? What does that even look like? I believe so many people have made their victimization their identity. But how does one do that? That's what this episode will be about today. We must first of all understand that to make your victimization your identity, you have to understand this, this is very important. To make your victimization your identity is a choice. Now, let me clarify that way people don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not referring to the victimization itself or what happened to you as a choice. That wasn't a choice what happened to you. If you were abused, if you were hurt, that was not a choice. As no one can really choose what happens to us. We don't choose that. But it is a choice to take what happened to us and cause that to become our full identity. But I do believe that I have a choice to either allow what happened to me to become my identity or I can do the opposite. One thing that really helped me is I had to realize that I am not what happened to me. I remember I shared that on Facebook and people really liked that. I said, I am not what happened to me. I will not be held a prisoner by my past and by my victimization. I am not what happened to me. Yes, it happened, but I am not that. I don't know who's watching right now, but you need that. You need to hear that word. You are not what happened to you. I don't care what happened to you. I don't care how painful it was. You are not that. Would you declare that today? I need you to declare it today. Say, I am not what I went through. One of my friends from Texas, his name is Quentin Simon. He wrote a song that says, I don't look like what I've been through. I'm changing it around and I'm saying, I am not what I went through. There is a difference. I don't look like what I've been through, but I'm also, I'm not what I've been through. Uh, you have went through pain, but you're not pain. You have went through trauma, but you're not trauma. You have went through hurt, but you're not hurt. Do you get the point? You are not what you've been through. I think you get the point. You are not what happened to you. And don't allow anyone to convince you that you are what happened to you, because you're not. So many people believe that they are what they encountered. Therefore, whatever that did happen to them becomes the central theme and focus of their life. It's obvious because that's all they talk about. They feed the victimization by always giving power and attention to it. Now, much of this, I believe, comes from a place of brokenness and not a place of wholeness. I mean, come on, folks. You can tell when somebody's truly over something. You can tell when somebody's just sharing something out of a place of wholeness. Hey, let me, hey, this is what happened to me. I was, for example, sexually abused as a child, but let me tell you how I overcame that. Let me tell you um, 
some routes that I took that helped me on the process of my healing. You can tell compared to a person that's always talking about it, uh, revenge, very revengeful, uh, want to get back at the abuser or whatnot. You can tell uh, when a person is coming from a place of bitterness than a place of wholeness. Oftentimes when one is unaware of what their identity is, they become very vulnerable. In other words, we become very open to anything because if you don't know who you are, you are more than likely to just accept whatever society tells you that you are. In other words, you really don't know who or what you are outside of the trauma that you've experienced. When I allowed my victim mentality to become my identity, I had no clue who I was. I didn't know what I was. And as a result, I had subscribed to certain beliefs as you'll never make it. You can't trust no one because no one really cares about you, Henry. Everyone is against me. Everyone is working against me. You'll never get over what happened to you. You deserve what you got. I am irredeemable and no good. Yes, these are thoughts that I had when I allowed my victimization to become my identity. I thought I was the very thing that happened to me. I thought I was that trauma, that pain, that hurt, that abuse. I thought I was those things partly because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I was. So I became vulnerable. I became open. Believe it or not, this mindset was developed to actually protect not only my victimization, but to also protect my identity. I really believe how I viewed myself. Even if someone told me the opposite and that I was the things I was believing about myself was still not convincing. You could have told me, well, well, Henry, you're not those things, though. You, you are good. You will make it. You could have told me the opposite of what I just wrote on this list here. Everyone is against me, but I feel like nobody is against you. Well, I'm irredeemable. I'm no good. Well, somebody could say, well, Henry, you are good. I still wouldn't believe it. You may say, well, why won't you believe it? Because you have to convince yourself within your own soul within your own mind, within your own heart. I can tell you till I'm blue in the face that you're loved, that you're accepted, and you're not what happened to you. And all these wonderful things I'm telling you, but until you finally get it and see it, it's just like a seed just falling to the ground and dying. That's exactly what it is. So people would tell me that your love you're accepted. You are good. You're good enough. I mean, you, you are redeemable. Henry, you're awesome. But at the same time, it was going in one ear and out the other ear. Why? Maybe they were convinced that I was good, but I, didn't, I wasn't convinced myself that I was the things that they were declaring over me. At the very core of my being, I said, this is who I am. My whole life is filtered through my pain. My whole life is filtered through my trauma. And then it dawned on me that this belief system, can this, and then it dawned on me, this belief system that I held so dear about myself and how I viewed myself, but I didn't know how to change it. I didn't know how to change it. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to go to. I, I didn't know. A lot of people talk about a safe place. I didn't know nothing about a safe place. I didn't trust anyone. I believed this at the core of my being that I was no good. That I was just like everybody else. That I'm going to suffer just like everybody else. I had to face my own pain, my own trauma. I had to face my own insecurities. And that was the hardest part for me. I had to face and challenge everything that I believed about myself that I found out later that wasn't true. But also questioning why did I even believe such things to start out with. 
Why do, you, why do you even believe that about yourself? Who told you that you were no good? Who told you that you were irredeemable? Who told you you wouldn't make it? Who told you that you can't trust anyone? Who told you that everybody and their mama is against you? Who told you? How can one convince themselves that they are not the things that they believe? about themselves. Now here's the answer. This is the answer that helped me. It may help you and I hope it does. We must pull back the layers of all the pain and trauma and insecurities in order to convince ourselves that we are not what we've been through. It is then and only then you can see yourself more clearly and in a new light. You got to pull back all that pain, pull back all that hurt, uh, fear, insecurity, all those things. Because until you pull that back, you're going to still see yourself as you see yourself. Here's another thought. What you see, you will manifest. So if you keep convincing yourself, well, I'm no good. And you got to realize we're talking about victim mentality. All this stuff is associated with victim mentality. When you keep saying to yourself, I will never make it. Well, guess what? You convince yourself of that. You, you probably never will. I'm no good. Well, you probably will never be no good. In your mind, that is. So sometimes what we see, we manifest. We need to change our perception. That's why it's important to clear up any distortion or perceptions about yourself that are simply not true. I am fully aware that this takes time. I have always believed that healing is progressive. I don't have all the answers, but what I do know is that the more you deconstruct the false perceptions about yourself, the clearer you will start to see yourself. Can I say it again? The more you destroy or deconstruct the false perceptions or ideals or ideology that you have about yourself, the clearer you will start to see yourself. And may I have the honor to tell you that are watching right now. I want to have the honor to speak past your pain. And I want to declare something over you. And I am well aware that what I was saying may not resonate with you right now because you're still hurt by what they did. You're still hurt by the trauma. I get it. You may not resonate with this at first, but I promise you that after the dust settles, you'll probably come back to this video and after the victim mentality diminishes, you will start to see yourself as true. You will start to see yourself as value. I want to declare this over you today. You are value. You are love. You are wanted. You are firm. You are powerful. And you are somebody. That's right. You are somebody. I know you're in a dark place right now. I know those things I just declared over you, you probably, it's probably going in one ear, not the other, but I want you to know that I believe in you and that you are somebody and that you can make it no matter what you've been through, no matter the storms that may come your way or come in your life. I'm here to tell you from experience that the answer is not to wobble around and victim mentality. The answer is not to make excuses for our behavior. The answer is simply not connecting yourself or allowing victim mentality or victimization to become your identity because you are not what you look like and you also you are not what happened to you. Please join me next week. We're going to go into part four of our series, um, Victim Mentality. And I believe you're really going to enjoy it. I hate to see it go to a close, but next week uh, we're going to talk about how to escape it. You know, a lot of people, you know, we hear a lot about uh, different subjects, but rarely do you ever hear about, okay, I get that, but... How do I exactly come out of it? 
I'll tell you what worked for me, and I hope you come back, and I hope you join me next week. Hi, if you like what you're seeing today, be sure to connect with Brother Henry at www.facebook.com forward slash the Brother Henry and You Show. And also be sure to check out and subscribe to his YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com forward slash Henry Harris 100. We hope that this has been a blessing to you and we hope to hear from you soon. Keep watching because what matters to you matters to Brother Henry.